It's our top games from 2022. <laughs> Tantrum House Studio 3. I'm Sarah Meadows. I'm Melissa Dell. And I'm Katie Pills. All right, something really exciting here at the beginning. We are doing a contest with this video. If we get 2,000 likes in one week, we will give away 10 games from 2022. Crazy. Wow. So to be entered, you need to like the video and you need to comment on the video. And if we reach 2,000 likes, we will randomly select 10 people to get a game from 2022. So I think we should jump into our top 10. All right, number 10. So my number 10 is Ready, Set, Bet from AEG. I think this would have made it higher on my list, but my favorite part is actually just running the house where you roll the dice and <laughs> the horses. <laughs> I am not good at the betting part, so I, that's why it's down further on my list. But we've played this with really, really large groups, and uh, it is a blast every time. And it's very chaotic and loud and boisterous, and that's why it made up my list this year. This was so close to making my list, because I enjoy it too, but I enjoy the other part, the placing the bets and the franticness of that. All right, so my number 10 is a lot bigger. Ooh, it wow. is, and I, I only have the lid. <laughs> yes. It would be too hard to can't, can't so, the whole thing up. <laughs> Mosaic, a story of civilization from Forbidden Games. Can you see me over this? Uh, this was a surprise for me because it has area control and a little bit of player interaction <gasps> in it. What? I know, but it also has set collection. It has card powers, asymmetric powers, and I really enjoyed the way those things came together in the game. So I, I was really surprised about this one. I wouldn't have said it would be in my top 10 before I played it, then I played it, and I was like, this one's a thumbs a up. One. <laughs> it was a, not, a little bit further off my list than I wanted it to be, but that's where it is. Mm -hmm. All right, All right Katie. so my number 10 is also Ready, Set, Bet. <laughs> Um, I'm just going to echo a little bit of what Sarah said, which is it is a rowdy, good time, people yelling, and um, I wouldn't say necessarily throwing things, but that might have happened once or twice. Um, and I, I think this is fun if you play either way, as either the house where you're rolling and moving, and moving the horses, or if you're doing the betting. Um, and I, I love that both sides of that are, are fun to play. Um, so that and I don't feel like the whoever plays the house gets stuck. Like, oh, yeah. Usually whoever's managing or GMing or whatever, like it, yeah. it's kind of boring and they're just flipping yeah. cards or doing things. But this it's, is it's this still is exciting. the exciting part. Like you're actually doing something as you're, fast as you yeah, can. Yeah, you're still rolling and doing stuff as fast as you can. We actually found that having two people do yes. the house is the best because one person can roll, the other person can move the horses, and, and they can go so Everybody fast. Everybody freaks out because they can't keep up. Yes, so, so yeah. yeah. Kevin and I called dibs on this for Christmas. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> number nine. My number nine is Creature Comforts from uh, Kids Table Board Gaming, and this one, is, it kind of reminds me of Everdell. It's got the animals. Uh, and you're collecting different items, but it's got a very interesting dice mechanic, which I love dice work as worker placement type games. I, so, I need to try this. I haven't tried it yet. Oh, I think you would enjoy it because it, um, my kids are actually very good at it and they've beaten me, which oh. surprises me because it's a lot about resource management. And they do well. So wow, we've enjoyed it as a family, and I need to get it to the table a few more times over Christmas with them. Mm -hmm. so. All right, my number nine is Turing Machine from Scorpion Mask. I love deduction and logic puzzles, and that's basically all this game is, with trying to figure out a code by you know checking things, getting your letting it. The machine will let you know if you got it right or not right or how close you got, basically. 
and I just love it. I actually like playing it solo instead of the competitive version with other players. There's also a cooperative version, so lots of different ways you can play it, but anything that has me filling out sheets and marking things <laughs> yes or no, or oh, because of A, it can't be B, it must be C, any yeah. of that, I'm just gonna love it. And Turing Machine does that really well. And the punch cards, the tactile 3D nature of putting the punch cards on to see if you get the check mark or the X is really fun. Oh, this is one I didn't get to play, but I am interested in playing because I do like the logic puzzle parts of things. So my number nine is Lacrimosa. Um, this name of this game is, um, is a part of music and this is about um, the journey of composing different music pieces and this one I didn't think was going to make my list but the more I think about it, the more I'm like I want to play it again because I just never could figure out a good strategy. <laughs> I, I played it several times and I just never could figure out how to win <laughs> and that goes back to the problem solving aspect of things is where I'm like how can I put together a good strategy for this game. Um, and so I'm interested in playing several more times to try to see what 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 am I doing wrong? <laughs> why am I getting why am I getting such terrible scores in this game? Um, but my mind has not quit thinking about because there's a lot of moving parts. I said moving parts. There's a lot of parts in this game and a lot of things and a lot of paths to victory. Um, so many ways. Which you, one is the right one for this yeah, game yeah. against these players? I, yes, exactly. And I, I love that about a game that there's different parts that you can focus on and still do well. Well, maybe if you don't play with Ryan, you might actually. That's win. true. Ryan, <laughs> Ryan has crushed me every time. So <laughs> I'm not playing it with Ryan next time. <laughs> number eight. My number eight is the Great Split from Horrible Guild. Uh, I love that it is beautiful, oh, yes. and I love that they took something that could have been probably just a roll and write sheet. They went ahead and made it gorgeous with very nice deluxified components. Uh, so I wonder if we'll see some more games like that this upcoming year where um, instead of just having a pad of paper, they went ahead and made a board that you move tokens. Mm -hmm. um, but I do like the strategy of paying attention to what everyone else is doing so that you can pass off cards and try and trick them into giving you what you want. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I like that this plays a lot of yes. players and because of the simultaneous nature, it's not going to really add more time to the game yeah. to add more players. So I definitely think it's great for five, six, seven mm -hmm. players. Yep. What's your number eight? Oh, yes, number eight, my turn. <laughs> Terracotta Army, guess gotta face up and all of that. This is from Board and Dice, and it has an interesting worker placement aspect with these concentric rings that rotate. So it's interesting trying to figure out the best placement for your worker and what's gonna happen if I pay a coin to rotate it. Also, there's the mausoleum with all of these statues, the different warriors. They score different ways. There's scoring that happens during the game and the end of the game. And I love that puzzle nature of figuring out where do I place my warrior to get points now and to get points later. So lots of interesting thinking going on in the game. And it looks really cool on the table with those figures when they're placed. So I've enjoyed my plays of Terracotta Army. All right, my number eight is Cat in a Box. Um, this game, I first of all, love trick-taking games, and I love that this game makes you think differently about mm, the regular trick-taking game. Um, the fact that you are not just trying to take a trick, but you're also trying to get specific colors in a row mm -hmm. um, on the board um, to score differently. And that part of it is just really interesting to me. Now, Sarah told me. <laughs> I didn't like it. She doesn't like it at all, because, but we, lo we both love trick-taking games. I really games. Love, love trick taking games. I play a lot of trick taking games. Yeah. And this one I was like, mm, I don't know. I haven't been able to figure out why I don't like it though. Yeah. 
See, but, I, I'm team Katie on this one. <laughs> I do enjoy it, and I like that spatial aspect of trying to get your tokens beside each other to score more points. Yes. So, as I say, it just it adds an extra layer that you have to think about that you don't normally have to think about in a trick taking game, um, and that I thought was just really fun and interesting. So, yeah, that was our number eight. Number seven. My number seven is Twilight Inscription. This is from Fantasy Flight Games. And while I have not played any of anything in the Twilight universe, universe <laughs> whatever, I was trying to think of the word. Um, this one really pulled me in because of the difficulty level of the roll and write type game. I really love heavy roll and writes, so I obviously was going to make my list. So I've only played half a game yeah, of this. So game. this one's not on my list because I haven't completely played, the whole thing. played it, but I did enjoy the little bit that I did play and it was a little bit like, okay, <laughs> yes. what's going on here? <laughs> and it was a learning game too. So I yeah. think like a second game, once you understand everything, it'll all like tick into place and you're like, I do this and 80 I, other yeah, things I happen. Like that it, we're, you're playing against other people and I like that it breaks down the rounds. So some rounds you're kind of doing similar things and other rounds you might go in a completely different direction from everybody else. So. My number seven is also space themed. It is Space Station Phoenix from Rio Grande Games and I love games that have variable player powers, have lots of variability in game setups and in the game itself because I like pulling different levers and trying different strategies and what's going to work this time or that time. Um, and this has a lot of that going on. You're building your space station and there's going to be different parts each time and you're filling it with aliens and people and there's lots of combos that you can trigger based on what you do. So I've enjoyed my plays of Space Station Phoenix. Uh, it's just kind of a, a joy to, to see how much you can do in a turn and combo things. So I really enjoyed this one. It is a table hog though. It lots of space oh, so for it. this one. You need, everybody <laughs> needs like their own <laughs> card table size area. <laughs> Speaking of table hogs, oh, here is um, the Jurassic World, the legacy of Isla Nublar. It is also a table hog. You can't tell in the video how heavy this is, um, but this is a legacy game and you are building, slowly building up the park and working through the Jurassic Park series, like some of the events that happen in the first movie happen in, in well, actually you start at like building up the island and um, then you like progress through the movies but um, some of those things that happen in the movies happen in the board game. I'm going to try not to give any spoilers um, but still tell what I like about it. Um, you're um, deciding what dinosaurs inhabit what part of the island and then they get out. That shouldn't be a surprise. <laughs> I mean that's not a surprise. That shouldn't be a surprise. Um, and you don't realize, sometimes you don't realize starting out where, when you place these stickers down that, oh, in the next session, this was a terrible place to put <laughs> this thing, you know, because of this thing that's happening. Um, Consequences. I know, yes. <laughs> um, so anyway, Ryan and I um, do really enjoy a lot of the, um, I'm, I'm blanking. Cooperative. Cooperative, thank you. I was like, companion? Anyway, the cooperative games, and this has been one that we've been enjoying unlocking new new pieces and um, just enjoying the aspect of trying to survive an island of dinosaurs together. Um, so we've been mostly on the same page on what we needed to do each time, so it's been nice. But Number six. My number six, I don't actually have a copy yet played a number of times with the prototype and that is block and key and it is just starting to fulfill so I've seen other people playing it and I'm really jealous uh, this one I'm gonna have to maybe play with you guys because I played against Will and Jonah the prototype a bunch of times and they're not good at it oh. <laughs> this is the three-dimensional one it's the three-dimensional oh, spatial so yeah. you have to place 
uh, these cubes on the upper board and and configure it so that your point of view um, is going to be different than everybody else's. So you're trying to get uh, certain uh, goals or whatever. So yeah. um, thoroughly enjoyed it, but I don't have the game in person. Yet. Yeah, it definitely intrigued me. So no, as I say, once, I haven't got a chance to play it. <laughs> once you get it, we'll we'll need to play. Perfect. We should not play with Kevin because I think you'd be very good at it. He's very good at those spatial things. All right, I'm up for the challenge, Kevin. <laughs> <laughs> so my number six, I also don't have the copy with me, is Wordcraft from Artipia Games. This is a word game. I love word games. And it's not just about spelling good words or long words or unusual words. There's an aspect of area control on the letters. So the more you use a letter, the more likely you are to score it. But then there's also goals that you're trying to achieve throughout the game. And it might be something like use two red letters in your word or make a five letter word or start it with one of the yellow letters and end with a green letter. And I love that puzzly aspect. Again, love yeah. puzzles <laughs> of trying to find a word that's going to hit several of those mm -hmm. goals and it's going to help with the area control and uh, I have thoroughly enjoyed playing WordCraft and we have played it with a lot of different people and I would say that most of them have also really enjoyed it and several want to go out and buy their own copies. I feel like if you played a lot of Wordle this last year, you might be brushed up to play this game. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right, I actually do have mine. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> Here is Wonderland's War. Um, this one is still in the shrink wrap. Um, I have actually played this one. I got to play the prototype when it was very first um, being looked at. Um, and then I've gotten to play the finished version. This is my deluxe all-in version that came from Kickstarter. I don't have all the other boxes that came with it. Um, but Ryan was so sweet to um, back this for me for my Valentine's slash birthday <laughs> present. Um, and so I'm excited to get it out and check out all the goodies and I really want to paint those many things. But um, this is Wonderland's War and I love the IP for this. Um, huge fan of Wonderland and it's a bag builder. Um, and I know there's other bag builders out there but this was one of the first ones that I had gotten to try out. Um, and I, I love just the quirky aspects of the whole game, um, adding tokens in and pulling them out. And I really like the asymmetric abilities um, that each of the main characters have. So that's really fun and, and looking forward to painting all these. Number five. My number five is a surprise to me because normally I hate these type of games. <laughs> uh, but I, this is a huge surprise. Decorum. You are cooperatively playing a logic puzzle with everybody else at the table, so I didn't think I was going to enjoy it, and we have laughed for hours playing this about, no, Becky, you, you hate that color lamp. Why is it in your room? <laughs> We've sat and argued about the decor of your house and your bedroom and everything else and had a great time playing. Oh, this but, is from Fleckgate. Yes, yeah. yeah. so I haven't tried this one yet, but you kind of said logic in yes. there, so maybe I should give this one a try. My number, what are we on? Five. <laughs> is also a logic game, mm -hmm. and it's Alice in Wonderland themed, mm -hmm. <laughs> syncing up sort of with others. So Paint the Roses from North Star Game Studios. I really enjoy this cooperative puzzle solving game and i'm not usually a huge fan of cooperative games but then you combine it with the logic aspect and it's a winner for me i really enjoy this when you add in the escape from the castle module expansion with it because it's giving more variability to the game. You can add in special characters and then the queen has a deck of cards and she's doing bad things during the game. So it just ups the difficulty a little bit mm -hmm. and the variability. But basically you're putting a tile in the garden and trying to guess what whims the queen has given to the other players. So is it, oh, diamonds and spades need to be together or is it pink flowers and spades or is it pink and pink? 
and all you have are little cubes that you can place down. So you're, again, you have sheets with like the little logic puzzles oh, yes. that you're writing on and you're like, oh, it can't be this one, can't be this one, could be this one. So did you love Clue as a child? Yes, Clue. And <laughs> and I I spent hours doing those little books of logic puzzles oh, where it's yes. like who's wearing the red hat and carrying the cane and eating the pie and you have to like yep. figure out all those yeah. things. So Paint the Roses, great if you like logic deduction games and cooperative games. All right, my number five is Verdant, um, if I've said that correctly. Um, and this game is, I feel like, I would, first of all, love houseplants. So this you one has a lot of houseplants. I, I do have a lot of houseplants. <laughs> so this is all about getting the right houseplant into the right room of the house and meeting the right light requirements and that sort of thing. Um, and it's uh, it's beautiful, and I also find it relaxing for a grid placement game. It's fairly relaxing. So we that. just played this over Thanksgiving, and yes, I that was the comment. Oh, this while I thought it was going to be really hard, I'm enjoying just sitting here and <laughs> yeah, and, and just plants. Oh, and stuff. like oh, here's a beautiful spider plant. I'm placing that in my <laughs> such and such room of my house, and it's going to be so nice in here <laughs> next to this. <laughs> other plant. Yeah. <laughs> so I kind of do that at my own house. So it's a, it was fun for me to be able to play this in the in the board game part um, and the uh, beautiful illustrations and um, like you said it's and it's a, an approachable game as well. So yes lots of fun. Very good. Number four. My number four is Endless Winter Paleo American from Fantasia Games and designer Stan Kordonsky. This is a massive table hog with lots of different boards with all with different like mini games going on that you're doing different stuff. Um, it's a lot to try and keep track of and control and I love it all. <laughs> so what you're saying is I need to play yes, this game. Yes, you need to play this game. <laughs> <laughs> I just haven't played it yet. <laughs> That's how half your list is for me. So. <laughs> yeah. All right. probably be some more overlap. So my number four is Woodcraft, not to be confused with Wordcraft. Um, it's an action selection game where there's a wheel and you're moving your action to another spot and where it is, you're getting bonuses. So I enjoy that aspect of choosing your actions to try to get the most bang for your buck. You also are using dice in a really interesting way where you have to have certain colors and pit values to complete contracts. And the dice represent wood. And the whole theme is you can split them. So if I have a five, I could saw it to make a two and a three, mm -hmm. or you can glue them together, or you can add little bits of pieces to them. So again, very puzzly with yeah. trying to figure out how to efficiently use your actions and your dice. It's a very tight game though. So I'll say the first one or two times I played, terrible. Like how can <laughs> I, everybody how else can I do anything? How do I like, complete things and score correctly? Points? I don't feel like I made any points. <laughs> but then like, you start seeing, oh, I can do this and this and use my free actions and spend this and so part of the game is just figuring out how to do more on mm -hmm. your turns. And so it's a type of game, kind of like you mentioned with Lacrimosa, mm -hmm. that I'm still figuring it out, but yeah. I want to play it more. Yes. Sometimes you're like, oh, I never want to play this again. This one I'm like, oh, I'm, if I had yeah. done this, if, if I had had one more resource, I could have gotten 16 you, points. You wake up in the middle of the night going, oh, I could have done this, and it would have been great. <laughs> So yeah, <laughs> that's how I kind of feel with Woodcraft of there is a lot going on, but it's intriguing and the thought processes I'm enjoying whether I get everything to work or not. So I've really enjoyed Woodcraft. All right. My number four is Downtown Farmer's Market. This is a um, very approachable um, small game. It doesn't take up much table space. Um, and I've had a lot of fun playing this with um, people who may or may not be really into board gaming. Um, 
but it is a grid placement game and the really fun part of this is you choose your goals for your columns and your rows and then you have to draft the tiles that go there but you're trying not to spoil your columns while also getting your rows mm. and um, there's way more thinking that goes into it than appears from yeah, this small like little... unassuming box <laughs> <laughs> um, and it uh, this is not a relaxing game. This is the kind of game that you sit there and you go, oh no, if the wrong tiles come out, I'll lose all of these points because I'll mess up a column and a row. <laughs> um, and so it, it's, um, it's really fun. It's um, not very long. It's a max of four players, um, but it's just a fun little game that you can pull out, maybe a 30 minute game. And it's, I've had a lot of fun playing it this year. So. Number three. My number three is the Guild of Merchant of Explorers. And I say the name wrong every time, which is why it's not number one. It's a hard, I would say, the name of this game. I just say Guild and hope everybody knows what I'm talking about. Guild from AEG. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I know what you're talking about. Uh, this one, I love that everybody is basically getting the same actions, except for you have that one card that is unique to you. I love those. Your one movement. Yes. <laughs> yep. I, I love where we're all given the same basic stuff, and whoever does the best with it is the winner. It's one of my favorite mechanics. Mine, too. <laughs> yes. <laughs> 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 familiar one for my number three, Lacrimosa. Katie's already explained a lot of it. Some of the things that I love are the multi-use cards, deciding... Oh, I didn't even get into that. Do I use it for the top action or do I use it for kind of the income at the end? I also think that the area majority is very interesting in this game. It's not, do I have more tokens than someone else? It's, have I backed the right composer. Mm -hmm. So Katie and I could work together to get the composer that we want to have more in that area. So I liked that aspect where it wasn't quite as combative. Mm -hmm. And then I just love games where you can score points in lots of different ways and you can do different things. So I've enjoyed my plays of Lacrimosa and I think the component quality is very good with the True. inset double layered boards and so. Really enjoyed it. Lacrimosa from Devere. Okay. My number three is Old London Bridge. Um, in this game, you are building the Old London Bridge and you're purchasing buildings um, that will start building up into um, a, a big machine that was going to work for you. And it depends on what color. So you can choose a lot of red buildings and the more you choose red buildings, the greater the multiplier it's mm. going to be when you use that action. Um, and so you're you're kind of building up this this engine that starts really pushing you forward. Um, and I found that at least in the games we've played, you can't ignore any building type and still do well. Like you have to. It like the game sort of forces you to diversify, even though it's the the pulling all of the same kind that really like punches you forward with points. Um, so there's a lot of interesting parts of that and this is really tactile too because you actually have a physical like little bridge that you like slot in oh, your buildings nice. um, and that's fine. There's um, an aspect to it of um, you, you can't just choose any building you want to because you have to choose a building that's in ascending number order. Um, so you can't get... So is um, that kind of like Welcome To where you're trying to arrange yes, them? Yes, nice. yes, you have to. Okay, now, you, now i gotta you've got to get this done. You've got these <laughs> random choices, but you're like, I'm on 89 and the only choices are below 20. I'm going to really cut my options short here, you know? Um, so anyway, it's it's got a lot of interesting parts to it. Um, and that is Old London Bridge by Queen Mace. Number two. My number two is Verdict from AG and Flat Out Games, and we've already talked about it, but I love that it has a lot of that same 
kind of like a tile laying game, but it's cards mm -hmm. um, and trying to match up all the different aspects of each one perfectly. And then there's combos and bonuses and and it's relaxing. And it's relaxing. <laughs> I do find it way more relaxing than Calico. I think I still like Calico more. I love the brain burner in Calico, yeah. but this one... I, I play Calico one, first and then recover second. from here. Yeah, this one's a close <laughs> second. And it's my number two. Well, my number two has also already been mentioned. It's the Guild of Merchant Explorers. And I love everything that Sarah mentioned about it. And for me, I do love games where I can basically put my head down and do my own thing on my own board. And yes. I don't have to worry about <laughs> other people attacking me or taking something that I want. Mm -hmm. uh, they, basically, the only player interaction is a racing for goals. The goals. As mm -hmm. I say, the goals is the only place where right. somebody's beat beat you to so, so you still sort of have to pay attention to what other people are yeah, doing. Yeah, I'm definitely looking at other people's papers. Like, oh, are they gonna are they gonna get to that goal before me? Do I need to, to do that? But yeah. yeah. Where they're going on their little I, board I love whatever. that there are different maps, so there's variability. Also there's some expansion that give you more maps and I could play this over and over and over and over again. I love it. So my number two <laughs> is also the Guild of Merchant Explorers. I'm going to say yes to everything that's been said um, with the caveat that um, I haven't figured this game out. <laughs> I'm still, like, every time I play it, I'm like, oh, what are your final scores? And, you know, it's like, oh, man, I made it to, like, 100 this time. I was like, that's good. I'm not going to mention that mine was 30. <laughs> I am so bad at this game, but I have enjoyed it so much. Even like, because a lot of times you play a game and you're like, I suck at this game. And then you're like, I don't want to play that again. But this one, I'm like, yes, bring it on. I'm going to figure it out this time. <laughs> um, it probably doesn't help that every time I play, we play a different map. So I'm like, I finally like at the end, I'm like, that's the route I should have taken. And then we're like, oh, here's the new map. And I'm like, oh, man, I don't know what to do with this one now. It's um, a devious plan. <laughs> I mean, apparently so. Um, so anyway, that's the Guild of Merchant Explorers. Definitely check it out. <laughs> number one. So what do you guys think? What do you think I picked this year? This is oh. Sarah's number one in the bag. It fits in this, bo in this bag. I'm gonna First of all, see if so. I can feel. <laughs> Nope. Got so that. is that is that a hint that it's not the Everdell game? Can that it's actually not, fit in the I was going to say, I don't think it's Everdell. It doesn't fit in there. That's, oh, that's oh here, here it is for reference. Oh, it, yep. It nope. is not Everdell, the collector's <laughs> edition. I'm okay. trying to think what hasn't, what hasn't been on Sarah's list yet. Oh. I, I don't know. <laughs> I went way in left field this time. Did you really? Yeah. Oh, there's gonna be no way we can guess it then. Way in left field. I don't know. It's... Oh, oh. <sighs> Is think... it a small game? Is it a party game? Yes. Oh, it's a party game. I don't normally even pick party games in my top ten. Is it a game that you went through the whole deck of cards? Uh. There's a lot okay, of there's two. There's okay, two. There's two. You're narrowing it down. Of those. All right. So my, I saying, my I guess. Know. I don't still have a That tells you how many times I've played. I've gone through a massive deck of oh, cards. Oh, okay. I have three three options here. Sounds fishy. Fun facts. Or green team wins. I oh, think, I'm going with green team wins. I think it's green team wins. Yep, you guys got it. Ah! Okay. You definitely came up. The, I would have never come up with that. The main reason this is on my number one is because this is the most played game for me. Yeah. This didn't even come out till later in the year. And I had people asking me almost every single game night we went to, can we play Green Team Wins? And I'm like literally just trying to make up and remember the questions from the prototype. <laughs> yes. And all year long, I'm like, finally, I've just kept a list on my phone. Okay, here's some questions that we could play with some paper yeah. and scraps to try and play the game because everybody wanted to play it so much. Yeah. I've always had a great time playing. I love the discussion afterwards. Will, there's no reason you need to like waffles over pancakes 
because of this. And like yep. every, every time there's great discussion. Oh yes, this is one of those that when we played the prototype, there was a huge table of people at mm -hmm. the convention and it was loud and ruckus and people were like yelling and pointing <laughs> at each other and it, everybody was coming around going, what are they playing? <laughs> Yep. So, yes. had a great time this year with Green Team Wits. Mm -hmm. Alright, why don't we take it out of the thing, because you won't be able to see me at all if we get three of these bags up here. Oh, that's all true. Right. Alright. Let's see. I don't even know if it's I'll sideways say, or I'll if it's standing up. I have, I, have, I, have, I have no idea. I didn't see how hard it Obviously, was for it, it up it also there. fits in this box. Yes. Mm -hmm. Or the bag. Unfortunately, Which my means, guess for this would have been Guild of Merchant Explorers, but it's I, not I, that, I, so I don't foundation I wrong. did waffle on whether Guild should have been my number one. I, yeah, so that would have been my guess, but yeah. She also didn't talk about Three Sisters, which was an honorable mention for me. Mm. Oh. I don't even know if she had that on her list at all. Uh, I'm gonna go with Foundations of Rome. That's gonna be my guess. I mean, Unless you want to start giving us some hints. Uh, <laughs> to let them. Was that this year? That was this year. That's my guess. All, All right. right so Foundations of Rome from Katie. To let them from Sarah. And the answer <gasps> is to, to let them. Can you see it? <laughs> so um, I really enjoyed the action selection in this game. You have dice pips and the die value is um, going to be how many resources that you get. But then the opposite side of the die is the power of the action. So I, I really enjoyed the action selection mechanism and then there's lots of things you can do. You're traveling around the map, you're filling your building, you're competing in these little festivals, sort of. You're trying to get to the places. So lots and lots of ways to get points, lots of things you can do on your turn, and then you can get these like special tiles that give you either extra, extra actions or bonus resources. So comboing those with your turns can really let you do a lot in the game. And I like that um, mixing of the the dice for the action, getting two things, resources and the action, and then trying to fit in the special tiles that will give you more stuff to do. So that oh, is cool. why Teletum made it to my number one. Oh, well, Very that's cool. pretty exciting. All right. I'll let All you right. have it, even though I, I didn't guess it right. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so here is my number one. Roll it around in this box. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna come this way so we can still see. Oh, Katie. Katie, I don't, I don't know. So what if my I'll say I would Kevin, have the Jurassic Kevin World, but that knew. was further down. Kevin, Kevin, knew. Kevin guessed it correctly when y'all were out of the room. <laughs> um, I would have said Castles of Mad King Ludwig, but I may have gotten some inside information that That's true. it's going to show up in what we're talking about after number one, which will be honorable mentions. Yeah. <laughs> um, mm -hmm. Is it something that appeared on your list a few years ago? Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm gonna guess Planet Unknown. Planet Unknown is oh, my guess. <laughs> that is very interesting, but it is not it. Oh, oh no. Oh, Libertalia, I should have no. known. Libertalia. Um, should have This um, feels like. Because this like, is a favorite. The I favorite. know. Should've and this, is, this appeared on my top ten favorites from oh. a few years ago. <laughs> the the um, older version. Yes, yes, the top ten of all time as opposed to just a year. Mm -hmm. um, so Libertalia, this is the Winds of Gale Crest. It is... Uh, a reprint, but they also added some extra stuff. So I, w I felt comfortable in saying that this is my favorite from this year <laughs> and not just like a reprint. Um, because they did add a few extra mechanics that, I, in my opinion, actually do really help the game, um, especially with some of the balance. Um, so 
I the thing that they added was the notoriety track or um, that may not be the exact word for it but um, it's a track that where you keep you keep track of um, tiebreakers yeah and there's things that you do that affect those tire tie breaking um, aspects this is another one of those games where you, you all have the same hand of cards mm -hmm. and you're all fighting over treasure and you're using different crewmen to to try to um, attain the treasure that you need um, but depending on which crew you have in your you know everybody's got the same crew in their hand but they're trying to do different things at different times and I'm sitting here trying really hard to think like what is Sarah gonna do which crewman is she gonna play if I think she plays this one I need to play this one and try to counteract it but then what's Melissa gonna do um, and I really She's like part both of us yes and so <laughs> what I, I really like about this game is trying to figure out who is going to be playing what and how I can try to counteract their plan with my own plan. <laughs> so, yes, so, here it is. This has a strong possibility of being one of our tourna meals for Tantrum Con Ooh. 2023. So, yes. It's, we're still working a few things out, but this one most likely will be on the schedule. Very cool. Yay. Looking forward to it. I'm excited. <laughs> So that now was, we have some honorable mentions to talk about. Oh yes, some honorable mentions. All right. Let's let's get them out. I I will say I have I have broken what I have normally said, which is no honorable mentions for me. But so I'm going to talk about my first one because I don't have the game. Okay. And there's a reason it's an honorable mention on my list. That one is Garden Bow. Uh, will actually helped with some art and development early on, so I didn't feel like I could add it to my list. Even though I've played it a ton, oh, yeah. and I really like the tile laying and trying to get your garden built just so to get the most points. So all of my honorable mentions are games that were on my top Kickstarter list in the last few years. So last year or the year before, Kevin's going to smoothly hand me one of them. Uh, this is the small expansion box, but Dead Reckoning from AEG with the card crafting and sailing around and battle boat that you're dropping cubes down into. I've really enjoyed playing that one and I also really like the saga expansions that you add into it that add story elements to the game and kind of some mystery. You know, what happens if I stop at this island and talk to this guy? Am I gonna get great stuff or am I gonna be cursed? Well, yeah, probably cursed. <laughs> <laughs> so. That is one of my. Should I do all of mine or keep Melissa, going? Let's hear one from Katie. All right. Oh, this is a. I, this one was passed in to Melissa. <laughs> so, Katie's next. Okay. Um, my as Melissa said, um, one of my honorable mentions is the collector's edition of Mad King Ludwig Castle. Oh, Kevin laid it down oh, here uh, for me. Uh, <laughs> the collector's edition, um, and. That's just because this is my favorite of all time games. I love it so much. <laughs> um, but I, I felt that I couldn't put it in as its own new game for 2022 because it it's the collector's edition. But anyway, but I had to put it in as an honorable mention. Mine too. Of that. This is one of my honorable mentions, and it's also one of my favorite games of all time. Yeah. Uh, so, one of mine is the new expansion to Everdell, and I, for a long time, really didn't even like Everdell, <laughs> <laughs> I, but I've grown to love it because uh, Will has me play it so much, and I was shocked last time we played just the, know. <laughs> just the new expansion with the train, and I felt like the train while it didn't actually do that much, it did give you more resources and end game goals, which just helps you do everything else more. So get more points at the end. Yeah. And uh, Liam killed wow. both of us. Oh, wow. He, I, Will was shocked when we did the score. He was like, no. He was like one or two points over my score, which 
we, we were using legendary cards and I couldn't remember if you score the other one or if you trade it out. So I looked it up and I was like, ah, oh, I don't get these other points. So you're ahead by two. And then Liam's like, I beat you both by 18. And we're like, what? <laughs> oh, wow. I was say there comes a point when you've taught your kids too yeah. well and now they beat you. Yep. <laughs> so, <laughs> so I, I, while the expansion didn't do much, uh, besides giving you more resources and end game goals, it, I did like it, and it made the gameplay better. Yeah. So. Hey, surprise! Oh, my, father's work. <laughs> my father's work. I really enjoy the app integration and storytelling that is in this game. Worker placement, creepy, macabre, like Frankenstein s Dracula s game. It is long though, like three hours long, so it doesn't get to the table as often. One of the reasons why it's one of my honorable mentions, but I do think that it is a very good game, especially if you like a little bit of story to go along with your worker placement. Okay, so these are surprises, so Kevin hasn't got these ready, but I've got another honorable mention. It is Planet Unknown. Oh. Actually, Kevin knew. He even knew. Wow, Kevin. Planet Unknown. That's the uh, prototype. This is the prototype box. That you've been um, playing for a whole year yes. while the rest of us wait for the game. Yes, starter. exactly. <laughs> um, this is, um, I, I, the reason it didn't make my list was because I actually put it on my list last year. Oh, okay. Like, that makes sense. Because I played, it last year I played it all last year, so I just was like, oh yeah. And y'all are like, no, it doesn't come out till next year. I was like, well, I'm still putting it on my list. <laughs> Um, so it's already been, it was on my list for last year, which is why I didn't make this year's list. So that was my honorable mention. It was the chicky one. Yeah. And I've got, I don't know, other honorable mentions? I, I have at least one more, Sarah. I, I do. Ark Nova. I, so like Everdell. Kevin knows. Like Everdell, I, I have a hard time with games where you have to get through the deck and every card's different and it's just, if you don't get what you want... It, there's not it's hard to deal with that mm -hmm. so like dice it's the same type of thing the randomness but yeah. with cards so that's why I didn't like Everdell for a long time and was like well you're just your strategy is bad but I was like I don't know I Arc, <laughs> Arc Nova I haven't played don't know about that. I don't know about that yeah uh, Arc Nova I've only played a couple times so I I feel like I needed to work on play a little bit more before I made my list but I yeah. did enjoy it but the same problem of ah, the, the games where I have to go through lots of cards and I got to deal with what I get is yeah I've only I've only played it once I enjoyed it but it again wasn't enough to quite make it on my top 10 so okay There's, big one coming incoming oh. so honorable mention again because it was on my kickstarter list and and i wanted to you know, oh. spread the love around uh, so this one almost could have been i guess this I, you did first. guess this one katie but i really do enjoy foundations of rome it's an approachable game and the the quality of the components the 3d um, miniatures it, I think just makes it more tactile and really makes the game shine. So I am glad that they went and made it big and impressive mm -hmm. because I really enjoy that aspect of the game and enjoy trying to fit all my buildings in the right place and score huh, after only, other people. Only if Kevin doesn't like totally mess up by putting buildings right where you need to build things, mm -hmm. which is problems I had. <laughs> Every time Same. I play, Kevin. Yes, Kevin. <laughs> or, or being sneaky and switching out a building where someone has placed their like, oh, I'm going to score off these coins, and then you switch it yeah. to population, and then you're like, ha, 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 no more points for you. Yeah. But, then, but then someone does it to you, and you're like, ah. Yeah. So, so Foundations of Rome, really enjoy it. It's easy to get to the table. It's probably one of my most played games yeah. that's not like a party game that I've played this year. Yeah. All right. One time. This is my last one. Out of left field, I'm going to be shocked if Kevin's got this one on hand because I didn't mention it. Um, is or he's got something behind his back. Hand to hand wombat. Oh, we don't have that. Uh, we don't have it yet. That was on our list too. But it's so awkward and funny. And it is. I was like, like such I, a good it, party it, game. It, I was going to say, it didn't make my top 10 just because uh, I, like, I had so many other games that I like, super enjoyed. Yeah. But I, and I didn't get to play it very often. 
Um, but we did a live playthrough <laughs> of Hand to Hand Wombat, and it was hilarious. Yes. Um, in that game, you're trying to, everybody's trying to close their eyes, cooperatively build these little, I don't know, they're like ziggurats or pyramids. Black, little block pyramid towers. And um, you're trying to close your eyes and do this as a team, but there's one traitor. Yeah. <laughs> and and it was hilarious because you don't know, you're having a hard time feeling what you're doing. You're all having your hands in a box, trying to like go, oh, <laughs> one hand at a time. Like, oh, I'm, I'm trying to build this thing. Who's got this thing? Who's got this thing? And in the meantime. And like when you're not the traitor, you're like hoarding the pieces. In the meantime. And everybody thinks it's you. The traitor's <laughs> like, oops. <laughs> Hilarious yeah. to rewind and watch the live video yeah. again because we're like, Will, it was you the whole <laughs> time. I knew it was you. And sometimes Will was just really bad at it, so <laughs> we thought it was Will. Oh, and him. So. Yeah, traitor games where you're like, Is that person the traitor or are they just inept? <laughs> sometimes you don't know. <laughs> no, but anyway, so that was our top 10 of 2022. Um, and we're looking for the 2,000, 2000 likes in the first week to get those 10 games sent out. Yep, like and comment to be entered. And let us know in the comments which list did you like the best? Who do you align with most? What games should have been on our list yep. that weren't? Let us know what your favorite games of 2022 are. Don't forget about the guys video. Oh yeah, I guess the guys made a video too. <laughs>